Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and today I want to talk about seven contemporary authors whose work I wish to explore further. Me? Contemporary? Shocking, I know. But uh, don't get too excited because contemporary in this case means uh, from the past five decades. So these authors that I'm talking about are by no means, you know, super current, super recent authors. In fact, quite a few of them have died in the past few decades as well. Uh, so I'm using the word contemporary very loosely here. Also, if you've seen some little kitty ears getting in the way, that's Minerva, who just can't bear the fact that I'm not paying attention to her for a second. Isn't that right, Minerb? Uh, in fact, she's just sat down on my notes, so good start. What was I saying? Yes, contemporary means any author who's published a book after 1960. Call me stuck in the past. I like to think of myself as a time traveller instead. Since this video might be a little bit longer, because I do want to talk in depth about some of these authors, uh, I will refer you to the description box where you will find timestamps, so that if you're only interested in one particular author or two particular authors, you can go there and click on the timestamp that will take you to the part of the video that you are actually interested in. So, without further ado, let's get started. Minerva, can you just get off my, get off my notebook, please? Oh, the look of annoyance on her little face. Right. The first author I want to talk about is Kazuo Ishiguro. Uh, I have read two of his books and they are probably the two most popular of his books. The first one I read was Never Let Me Go from 2005, which is uh, Booktube's favourite Ishiguro novel, I would say. Uh, this is a story set in a slightly alternate universe, although still very recognisable as Britain in the 1990s, and it is set in a boarding school to begin with, uh, where our character and her friends find it very difficult to adjust to the role that they have been given in society. And this book combines a coming-of-age story with a dystopian setting, with a bit of 90s nostalgia, in a really unique way, and I can see why Booktube loves it. I really, really enjoyed it as well. But the Ishiguro book that really hit me right in the heart was Remains of the Day, which was published in 1989 and uh, won the Man Booker Prize in the same year as well. And that book is um, a road trip narrative set in the 1950s. The main protagonist of The Remains of the Day is an aging butler who uh, takes a bit of a car journey to the west country of England and while he is traveling he reflects upon his life, upon the life of the masters that he has served in the big manor house where he has lived for decades, he reflects on his own family, he reflects on his relationships with other people. And um, it was one of my favourite books that I've read in recent years. Absolutely loved it. The thing that I admire about Ishiguro's writing in both of these novels is how he takes a genre and puts his own personal twist on it. And his own personal twist is a writing style that I really, really enjoy. Very slow, very introspective, very reflective and very character focused. And that is just right up my street. He is one of the author those authors where I'm pretty sure I want to read their entire works. But I've picked out two books in particular that I want to read next, that I want to talk about. Uh, the first one is his 2000 novel, When We Were Orphans which seems to be a historical crime mystery set in early 20th century China. Again, he's clearly taking a genre, in this case historical mystery fiction, and he's probably going to do something quite special with it. I, I like a good historical mystery. In fact, I often prefer historical mysteries to contemporary mysteries, but um, I, I can only imagine the weird twists he puts on this genre. And then the other book that I'm really interested in of his is called The Buried Giant, and this is from 2015. I believe this is his most recent release. And um, that one has received some mixed reviews, but that makes me all the more curious. And in this book, he takes on the fantasy genre. Uh, this is a 
Dark Ages inspired fantasy which is set in the world of King Arthur after the death of King Arthur and I believe the protagonists are a middle-aged couple. Again from that description alone I can only imagine the weird mixing and mashing up of genre tropes that Kazuo Ishiguro loves to play with and I can also imagine that that novel again is focused on some pretty unique and interesting characters. Now um, I am hoping from those novels to get more of his masterful character crafting. That's really what I love about his books. The characters that he writes about, they feel like real people but deeper. The, the, the thoughts that these characters have in his books are definitely thoughts that my little brain can't come up with and the feelings that he expresses in such a subtly, incredibly British way are somehow so much stronger than uh, if they were written in a more overtly emotional way. I also really enjoy slow paced writing and that is something that I hear him criticised about a lot but honestly that is not a big deal for me. Um, as far as I'm concerned he can write a 350 page novel about the boring day-to-day -day life of an office worker and I would love it. The next author I want to explore further is Margaret Atwood. And like absolutely everyone ever, I have read her uh, dystopian novel The Handmaid's Tale from 1985. This is commonly described as a feminist dystopia, meaning it is a dystopian world in which women are treated very horribly. I don't really need to go into much detail about The Handmaid's Tale because I'm sure you've either read or heard of it. So I'm going to move on to the books of hers that really interest me. And right at the top of that list is her 2003 novel Oryx and Craig. And um, that is right at the top of my list because I've heard so many people talk about it in such a positive way. Again, this is a dystopian fiction or I think as she prefers to call it speculative fiction set in the future. Uh, it is a post-apocalyptic fiction, it, it has aspects of climate fiction and I'm sure it, it mixes uh, many more dystopian uh, ideas into it, which is something that she did in Handmaid's Tale as well, where you have this world that is not just based along a single idea but it feels kind of organic, it feels like a politic that might actually develop based on circumstances and based on uh, on people's beliefs. So Oryx and Craig is part of a series so I'm hoping that if I enjoy that book as well then I will read the sequels too. Another book of hers that interests me is The Penelopead from 2005, which is an Odyssey retelling which focuses on the women of the story. I have not read the Odyssey, so I'll probably want to read that first, or maybe I'll just read the Wikipedia summary of it first, I don't know yet. But I'm very interested in hearing that ancient classic myth retold uh, from a modern perspective. And then finally, like everyone, I will eventually read The Testaments, which is her sequel to The Handmaid's Tale. And I have miraculously avoided spoilers for The Testaments so far, so that I can go into it completely without expectations, completely without preconceptions. I don't quite know what I'm expecting from it. I know that reception of the Testaments has been mixed. Unlike many people, I don't have a deep personal attachment to The Handmaid's Tale, so I expect that I'll be able to deal with whatever she throws at me. Let's move on to the third author I want to explore further and that is the late Octavia E. Butler. I have read two of her novels. One is Kindred from 1979. Uh, this is the story of a, a young woman named Dana who finds herself thrown back into the past into the 19th century where she finds herself on a plantation in the southern United States. Now she is a young black woman so it is not the best place for her to be and she soon figures out that she has been thrown back into her own family's history. 
super fascinating book. It's um, It uses supernatural elements, in this case, accidental time travel, to explore history from a perspective of a modern contemporary character. And I love that way of looking at history. I love time travel narratives where people from our time, or I guess in this case from the late 1970s, are thrown back into the past. But in this case, because Dana is exploring her own personal history and uh, her own country's history of slavery, it just adds so many extra layers to this story that make it just super fascinating to read. And I would highly recommend you read Kindred if you haven't yet already. It uh, deserves to be a modern classic. The other book that I have read of hers, and I'm, I'm going to gush about this one even more, is her 1993 dystopian fiction called The Parable of the Sower. And uh, this centers on a 15-year-old girl named Lauren who lives in a future California. And this is fairly near future. I have a feeling that this is set around the year 2020. So round about now. In, uh, the world has gone to pieces, of course. Um, climate change has wrecked everyone's lives. People are living in poverty. The privatization of everything from the police to uh, the fire service to medical care, everything is making people's lives difficult in this California. And uh, Lauren lives in a walled community, which is literally just a cul-de-sac with a few families. And um, while she is safe there, she feels not just bored, but she feels the urge to make something bigger out of her life. And soon she, will, she gets that opportunity and goes on a big journey across America and on a big personal journey as well. This book is written in diary form, which um, just added an extra layer of personality and character to this story. Uh, the Parable of the Sower is one of the best dystopian novels I have ever read. If you're at all interested in the dystopian uh, fiction genre like I am, then definitely read that. Uh, wow, I've gushed so much about the two Butler books that I've read that I'm going to have to speed through the ones that I want to read. So let's get on to that. Now, The Parable of the Sower has been followed by a, a sequel called The Parable of the Talents from 1998, which is set further into the future and deals with Lauren's adulthood, from what I understand. And then there is also a whole other series called the Patternist series, which uh, the book, first book of that one called Pattern Master was published in 1976, so a little bit before Kindred was published. And this seems to be like a proper deep sci-fi futuristic dystopian fiction. What I love about Butler's writing, similar to Kazuo Ishiguro's, is how she uses tropes and expectations that we have of a certain genre, like time travel or climate fiction or uh, far future dystopian fiction. And she uses that to ask real questions of uh, our own current contemporary real world society, while at the same time telling such a fantastic story that you don't feel like you're being lectured. I, I can't wait to explore more of Butler's writing. The fourth author I want to explore further, and we are going back to Britain for this one, is Andrea Levy, who recently passed away. I have only read one of her books, and that is uh, her historical novel, The Long Song, from 2010. This is set on a plantation in early 19th century Jamaica, and it is told from the perspective of an enslaved woman who basically writes her biography. And that is a very traditional way to write a, a novel, a historical novel especially. But Andrea Levy has so much fun with this format. She inserts a huge amount of humour into what is really quite a dreary tale. And she has a special knack for uh, inserting historical research into the narrative so that, again, you learn something without feeling 
like you're learning something. Uh, her characters have so much humanity that they feel like real people. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if I read if I found out that this was a real story about a real person because her characters feel so real and they are very well-rounded characters. They have humour, they have sadness, they are irrational, they do stupid things and then regret them. They just feel like actual people and that's what made the long song such a joy to read for me. So the other book that I really want to read of hers is her probably most famous novel, Small Island, which is set in 1940s Britain and it tells the story of what we now call the Windrush generation from the 1940s and 50s. So this is about uh, Jamaican immigrants in Britain and their lives and I don't know much more about this because I don't really want to know more about this until I read the book but I expect that similar to The Long Song, it has some super well-rounded characters and it has a mix of humour and real human emotion in it. Let's move on to the fifth author I want to recommend and that is Terry Pratchett. This one's going to be very quick. I have read about half a dozen of his Discworld books and I want to read all of the other Discworld books. So Terry Pratchett is known for writing the Discworld series but rather than a series it is just a huge set of novels. I don't know how many dozens of books are in this series and it is a huge collection of novels that are set in the same universe. They are kind of organized into several little series or books that deal with the same set of characters. My favorite group of characters in the Discworld universe uh, are the witches and I read uh, I think two or three of the witches books and I want to read all of the others but really I think what I want to do is just complete the Discworld books. I want to read all of them. Now I can't read them one after the other. I feel like Terry Pratchett is an author who is best enjoyed in small doses and once I finished one Discworld novel I don't feel the urge to read another one straight away but over the course of the next decade or so I'm sure I will have collected and read them all. If you're not at all familiar with Terry Pratchett and his Discworld books, they are fantasy slash humour slash fairy tale. He is probably best well known for his world building and for his incredibly British sense of humour. And that is maybe the reason why you pick up the books at first, to have a good laugh. But there is always a little bit more to the story, whether that's a satire of our current world and politics or whether that is a twist on a fairy tale or whether that is an exploration of a whole group of people of a whole way of thinking there's just always something about his books that goes beyond the funny next up the sixth author i want to read more of is pd james and i have read one of her most popular novels but from what i've heard one of her most unusual ones the Children of Men from 1992. This is a dystopian novel centered around a world in which no children are being born and around a university professor who is bored and who ends up going on a mission um, to possibly save the only unborn child in the world. It is very interesting, there's a lot to it. Um, it touches on themes of religion, of politics obviously of society and um, and it does so in this very British setting again. I really enjoyed this book but P.D. James is mostly known for writing crime fiction uh, especially for writing uh, her Adam oh I'm, I'm gonna mispronounce this Dalglish? Adam Dalglish detective novels which she wrote from 1962 to 2008. So she wrote this series over the course of five, almost five decades. And uh, from what I've heard, they are just really good, quite traditional, but incredibly well done crime novels. And I want to explore that series. I want to read at least the first and then see if I want to continue that. 
And the final author I want to recommend is Mark Lawrence. I have read two of his books from the the series that's called Book of the Ancestor. Um, the first one, Red Sister, was from 2017 and then in 2018 he published Grey Sister, the sequel to that. They are both books set in a fantasy universe in a convent but as you can imagine because this is a fantasy universe it's not your traditional benedictine nuns convent but indeed it is a convent that trains killer nuns spy nuns poisoner nuns and all sorts of other cool magical professions so imagine i i mean it, it's very obvious to uh, compare these books to Harry Potter because they are also set in this boarding school setting. The m refreshing thing for me about these books is that um, like 95% of the characters are female. Again, this is not something that you get a lot of in literature and certainly not in young adult literature and I really enjoyed those. So I will want to complete the Book of the Ancestor series with the next and last installment called Holy Sister that only came out this year and I'm, I'll be sure to get that probably on my Kindle soon and I'm also quite intrigued by another book that he published this year called One Word Kill which seems to be a weird science fiction slash fantasy mashup set around a group of Dungeons and Dragons players in the 1980s. It just sounds like a really fun and unique setting. Uh, I personally don't have any 1980s nostalgia because I wasn't alive then and I have very little experience of playing Dungeons and Dragons. Basically I tried it once and I didn't really like it but it still sounds like a really fun and fascinating story. So as you've just figured out I don't just read classics. I don't just read classics and uh, these are some contemporary-ish authors that I really want to read more of that I'll be keeping my eyes out for in the charity shops. Let me know if you have any particular books from these authors to recommend to me and let me know if you have any particular contemporary authors that you really want to explore further. Thank you for watching. Bye!